Hello everybody indeed, welcome to Metanorn's mini talk on Gargantia on the Virtuous Planet, episode 10, Island of Ambition. I am Jero, joined by Faux Shizzle. Hey, what's up everyone? And we've lost three people since our last podcast. I got eaten by the space quids. Yeah, Damn. yeah, poor guys. <laughs> Hope they come back next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, episode 10... Let's start by uh, talking about Pinion in this episode. A lot of the first segment of this episode was basically Pinion kind of being an asshole. I think the opinion that we've discussed on the podcast is how is the difference between Pinion and Flange and the approach that they've taken with separating themselves from the Gargantia fleet in pursuing this whale squid nest and the ancient treasures and such that dwell down there. We, I believe in the past it's generally been agreed upon between us that we thought Flange might be the guy to watch out for, but in this episode we really see that Pinion's taking quite a turn. Yeah, he's more like, oh, he doesn't care about really anybody but himself. And mm-hmm. the beginning part, they, they find the treasure, and he's just like, goes on the radio and just says, you know, we found this treasure, try to come and get it. I was like, why, why are you doing this? Like, Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? That's stupid. Yeah, Pinion has has really took a change in this episode. We we kind of thought of him as just the guy that wanted to get revenge for his brother. I don't know how you do that, especially against a whale squid. But all of a sudden, power has gotten to his head. He's he mm-hmm. sees all this ancient weapon weaponry. There was basically a rail gun that was uh, that pales in comparison to Chambers' power but still could really do some major damage against any kind of fleet on Earth. So, Pinion is now, he, you know, he captured some pirates and said, uh, and thought to himself, boy, I could go ahead and maybe recruit these guys. And now they're having fun, and he's trying to form his own fleet for uh, to make himself invincible. Yeah, basically he's forming his own Gargantia. You know, he's got mm-hmm. his own, like, he's got all these powerful weapons. Almost in a way, he doesn't need uh, red or lead Leto anymore. He can kind of push him to the side and be like, you know, you did your job, thanks, and I can do the rest now. Mm-hmm. And let's uh, transfer over to Red during this episode. Most of his time was spent sulking after seeing the shocking news about what the Hedeals are in evolved form of humans. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll go ahead. No, I was going to say, for me, it's almost a little bit like uh, a couple of Railgun S episodes when Ms. Mm-hmm. Saka discovers that these clones are existing. With Red, it's kind of the same thing. He's like, you can't believe what he just, just, just learned. It's kind of like mind, mind screwing him right now. He just still mm-hmm. doesn't know how to, I guess, wrap his mind around how to fight. He's technically fighting humans. That's the way what he looks at it now. Yeah, and uh, as we've been talking about through the series, his growth as a character, having spent time on Earth, the... His reaction to it is would, in my opinion, maybe be, not in my opinion, in my guesstimation, which I don't think that's a real word, is that he would be, he would react very differently had he seen it as a member of the Galactic Fleet. He wouldn't have regist- registered it the same way. He wouldn't have asked himself the same questions that he did in this episode. And what was really interesting is at the end of the episode, you have a robot explaining to a human what being human is. <laughs> right, that was kind of weird. <laughs> and like you said, mentioned before, since he's been on Earth, he has grown a lot. You know, with Amy and Bella, they, teach, they taught him early on that all life is precious, don't kill or just be killing. And that kind of kind of has changed him a little bit. And especially this episode, he's like, oh, well, now he doesn't know what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's like he's always known war and fighting and killing. He doesn't know anything else, so it's kind of a shock. He has to, you know, adapt to a new life again. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's Urobochi Ur- again, kind of asking uh, a question about the the nature of humans and how what Chamber says does make sense. That uh, and, and it's something Highway alluded to on the last podcast is that it doesn't really change much about war. You still have to fight the Heidi Owls because because there's they're evolved to a point to where they just they just attack. All right, they're mindless. Mm-hmm. They just attack for the sake of attacking, almost like Attack on Titan, if you want to get to it. 
Yeah. Yeah, the Titans in that, they just attack and eat. Just That's just what they do. You know, mm-hmm. They don't really say why, but it's just what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a really shocking scene. Well, shocking, maybe strong, because it's one of those things where in episode one, we had talked about this Commander Kugel, and we said we didn't see him die. We just saw him go away. The mm-hmm. assumption would be, well, he's going to fight a losing battle, but now he's here somehow, and it, it, and it's it's difficult to say. We we don't know the details yet of what Kugel's presence is. Is uh-huh. he still actually alive? How did he get to Earth? What about this new mech that uh, this new machine caliber that looks uh, at different, at least in color, to Chamber? Yeah, and they had those uh, weird worshippers that are like basically worshiping this machine like it's like, mm-hmm. I guess like basically like a god or that to them and like you said for all we know the commander may, may not be alive anymore it could just be the ai machine just still kind of functioning mm-hmm. which okay. might bring up interesting <laughs> fact like okay well if you're here then you know <laughs> what what goes on now <laughs> i was ready gonna have to fight his own kind and what's Should interesting I? about the expansion of the gargantia world the or planet earth with this new group of worshipers that we see is that in the early episodes it felt so contained to gargantia that you almost wondered what else is out there other than pirates and i think that's something that throughout moments of the series i kind of would have liked to seen a little bit but now it's you know there's so many probably going to be a lot of different you know ships and stuff coming out of the woodwork as as Sphinx heat up. Yeah, I'm wondering that too. And like what kind of weapons does the other people possess? You know, what they have besides just one robot. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Um so some other notes from this episode, uh I still don't know that girl's name. She's really tan, wears a red sort of tank top and and jean shorts. Yeah, she was showing a little bit more this week. I don't know who she is either. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like they just gave her lines, and uh, she's a little bit of a klutz. She's probably the one that's probably end up like getting killed some way, and just you know, sets the ball <laughs> rolling for a bunch of characters being killed off. That's all I can see. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're as uh, as people that are familiar with, with Butcher again, we're still waiting for the, the death <laughs> if if that's to come. But uh, right. But overall, uh, really interesting episode. The first half. Uh, you know, Pinion being an ass, that's kind of a really interesting turn for him. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure if I feel as good about it. Like, But the real, the really interesting stuff with Chamber w- was good. Uh, Fosh? Yeah, it's almost like Chamber and uh, Red were kind of button heads. You know, Red has his own new view now, and Chamber is still Galactic Alliance mode right now. He's just like, you know, gotta fight, gotta fight, gotta fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I, he's like basically, basically almost telling Red that, you know, quit bitching and, you know, do your job. <laughs> almost. <laughs> so for me, that's pretty much it. I know they had the other other girl that was with Amy. She was kind of talking to Flange a little bit about mm-hmm. something. I, I forgot what they're talking about. But yeah, she's Mountain. worried about, yeah, she's worried about certain things. And yes. with Amy, same thing. She's worried about Red and all that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much everybody on the Gargantia fleet including the people that were around pinion had heard the message and like flange was obviously frustrated with it and melty was almost kind of concerned that he agreed with pinion's ways Mm -hmm. but he seems to be in a little bit of a bind because there's some benefit to having pinion around as a repairman yeah and also rigid mentioned that she would understand if anybody else wanted to leave which is really interesting yeah but for now i think someone just needs to smack opinion or punch him in the face or something yeah. <laughs> wake him up because what he's doing is bad and it's probably gonna get a bunch of people killed if he's not not careful mm-hmm. but i just foresee them fixing that gun up and it, it blowing up and like just you know it's probably more powerful than he needs mm-hmm. yeah it's dangerous <laughs> yeah all right so uh for the Metanorn mini talks next week, I'm going to be away, so we're probably going to be combining eleven and twelve together, which 
probably makes sense considering that episode 13 is the the final it'll be a big one hopefully we'll have a, a another full house to talk about that so uh for Fosh, i'm jero and we'll see you in a couple weeks see you